Hello world, I'm Farsight and this is Kerbal Space Program. We're using the RP-1 uh, Realistic Programs 1 to Realistic Progression 1 mods along with the KLS mod for flight control. Our career has gotten to the point where we have sent a sounding rocket up past the Kármán line and we're ready to kind of swing into more expensive things. We are all of two months in. Yay! Let's load up the uh, save so we have a nice stable starting point. So, looking at science, uh, we started out with a lot of this basic stuff. Starting parts and so on. Um, and we were able to build a WAC Corporal, and that got us up to the Carmen line. And we have some more contracts that we need to do for our rocketry. And the ones that we should be able to do with upgrades to the WAC Corporal, well, all of the contracts are going to require better engines, which we are researching, and better SRB, which we are researching, and soon we need the better fuel tanks, which I am going to add to my research list now. And then we are going to need better avionics. It's very clear that these are the first four we want. There's some argument as to what order you want to do them in, but that's all right. We're just going to do them. The uh, science down here at the bottom, when we get down to this final one, we'll finally open up the biological um, sample capsule where we start getting into some interesting things happening. Uh, until then, we're, we're not going to be doing the, the, uh, um, the contracts that require a biological capsule. We do have a film camera, so we could put a film camera up. Uh, now, as it turns out, well, we can't do any of the available contracts with our S1 rocket. It just it doesn't go high enough. It cuts up to 120 kilometers but it can't hit 140, and if we put the 75 liters of payload on it, which another contract wants, we can only hit 40 kilometers. So our poor little sounding rocket is just going to not be able to do anything until we get the upgrades. However, I was able to build two downrange rockets. So D1 is a... Well, uh, it started out as a V2 rocket, and then I started tweaking it to uh, to be used for our um, contracts. And instead of having the avionics in a cone at the front and wasting a whole bunch of space, I thought, let's do it a little differently. I put the avionics in a cylinder and above it, so I did not want to do that. Come on. Above it, Whoops, let's reload it. No, don't save. D1, come on D1, load. At the very top is our actual, this is the tank that holds the payload, the sounding payload, 500 liters of sounding payload. It has to be a high pressure fuselage. That's got our 500 liters. Below that's our avionics. And I've put the whole thing in this pedal, which we can open. In fact, my avionics will open it. Not so important for this guy, but let's take a look. Uh, close this guy. If you look at the D2 rocket, basically the same rocket. The difference is the payload. And I forgot to turn it. So let's fix that. Uh, rotate. I want to grab this guy and I want to turn it by 90 degrees. There we go. So this is going to go up and if we if we had control over our attitude We'd head off to the right there, and the, the camera lenses here would be pointing down to the ground. 
In reality, it doesn't matter which direction they're pointing, so we're good. Both of these rockets are highly capable. Uh, D1 can get to 140 kilometers, apoapsis can't hit 160, but it can do 140. And with that profile, it can get more than 240 kilometers downrange with its 500 liter payload. D2, with the camera, can get all the way up to 150, but not quite 160, and can also get 240 kilometers downrange with the film camera. So we have three contracts that we can satisfy. Don't save. I do need to make sure my action groups are set up so that I can hit the uh, hit the button to make it dis to destroy it. I think that's set up already. So back to contracts. Oh, yeah. All right. We have all of those contracts available. Uh, Suborbital trajectory and return. This means put a parachute on the sounding rocket and get to 140. We can't get to 140 with our sounding rocket. 3,000 kilometers downrange is kind of beyond us. We're working toward it. We're working toward it, but we'll get there. Downrange distance LV development. We can do that. So this is actually an easy one. It's uh, basically get to 140 kilometer altitude, get 150 kilometers downrange, carry 500 units of sounding payload. Tested and that works. D1 can do that. The difficult mm -hmm. one is basically the same, but instead we want to get downrange uh, 240 kilometers. And this actually can be repeated. I do want to make sure though, when I, before you assume, I believe that you do it once. And the second time it comes up, I think the numbers change. So always check your contract. In fact, have your desired contract active when you do the last simulation of your vessel to make absolutely sure that everything you've done on the vessel leaves it able to actually achieve everything in the contract. So we can do these two. First low space film return. This is 100 kilometer altitude, not 140, just 100, so just the Carmen line. We need to get 200 kilometers downrange and recover the camera. And this doesn't say that you have to let it take pictures, but if I open up my clamshell and I let the camera take pictures, that returns science to me. Uh, I probably should have experimented with one, v one vessel that had the camera and the 500 liters of payload. Kind of nice to send all of it up and continue to get the camera uh, stuff when we're doing the, the downrange tests. But maybe, you know, our downrange launch vehicle development can be done with, a, with that dummy load. Uh, beyond that, we have biological. We can't do this because we don't have the biological capsule yet. That's that, uh, that bottom science, that bottom row of science has that. And attitude, altitude mm -hmm. sounding rockets. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is taking our sounding rocket and putting 75 units of payload. Put 75 liters of payload on the existing WAC Corporal. We can't quite hit 40 kilometers. Wah, wah. So we've got three we can do. Mm -hmm. right. I am going to choose the easiest one, which is this downrange distance launch vehicle development intermediate. We're going to accept it. And now we need to work out how to build this, uh, this rocket that's going to do this. It is going to be expensive. So first off, we do not have an LC that fits this guy. So we need to build an entirely new launch complex. So we've got LCS. I'm going to do LC-D this guy. So LC for downrange. We already have tonnage filled in. But this rocket is 12.8 tons. We're going to build an LC that can handle between 11 and 15 tons. That's cool. Um, we always launch these guys facing straight up. They can steer themselves. 
So there's that. I think I might want to increase the height limit to 20 meters though. Just like that. Our maximum engineers, we can, we can have up to 77 engineers working on this guy. And here's our costs. Well, there's no getting around it. We can't do anything else until we either get more science or build this launch complex. So I'm going to build the launch complex. So there it is. Uh, this is still trying to say how long would it take LCS to build this rocket. Not really very meaningful. If we look at our combined list, what we see is that LCS is going to finish its reconditioning in five days and some. We'll finish building our launch complex for downrange on May 10th. And a month later, we're going to start getting uh, science finished up. So we go back to staffing, and because we hit our Carmen line, we had 10 more applicants wander in the door saying they wanted to help us. And my habit is to take those free applicants and turn them into researchers. Because we can always use more research. In fact, at some point we will just start hiring people like crazy for science because the science does get lagged behind. But we need money for that. And we are going to have some major, major costs when we start tooling up to build the D1. So let's hire our 10 applicants here, and they are now researchers. That should have pulled these dates in somewhat. Yeah, I think it pulled it in. It didn't pull it in sooner than finishing LCD, but it's very close there. So with our researchers hired, there's nothing else we can do until our launch complex is ready to go. We aren't going to be launching any sound. Well, we could, we could launch sounding rockets to get some science. Um, let's take a look. I'm thinking, I launch a sounding rocket straight up, it's in this forest biome. If I launch one slightly tilted to the east, it's going to be out over the ocean. On the other hand, every time I've done this, I've started to overlap my rockets. I tend to run out of money real quick, so let's just focus on one thing at a time. We're going to focus on doing downrange for a bit. Okay, so the launch complex is going to be done. There we go. And now we pull up the ship that we want to build again because we're going to start configuring our launch complex. We need to set up the tooling for the ship. We all we did all this for the sounding rocket too. <clears throat> so, hit the RP1, and it automatically comes up with all the things we need to tool. And there's some pretty significant tooling costs here. 20,000 per buck, so we've got 27,000. But more importantly, we have 77,000 unlock credit. So the tooling will actually not take any money out of the bank. Let's do that. Uh, among other things, look up at the integration time. It would bring it down to 656 days from 2,700 days. Also need to switch over to LCD at some point. We have no employees on LCD. Tool that, purchase all toolings. <clears throat> well, the next thing is we need to hire some people. Staff. Now I am going to switch over to engineers for LCD. So we've got LCS has 10 people. Uh, we are going to unassign the people from LCS. I'm going to assign them to LCD. And 
now we're going to start hiring people and I want to very carefully watch my budget. So we're looking at costs over the next month. Uh, it's going to be hard to estimate because the engineers are idle. So before we do that, I know I'm flipping back and forth between the various views. If I pre-planned this, I could have just done all the stuff in one place and all the stuff in the other, I'd be done. Here, site, site management. I like using the plans thing. I mentioned that before. Um, I'm going to take D1. So let's add both these to the plans. So add D2. So we will be able to build a D2. And let's go back to D1. And now I want to add D1. Whoops. Can't do that because I haven't tooled up. There's a part in D1 I haven't tooled up for. Cancel. So D1 has slightly different fairings and a different tank for the uh, payload. Tool it up. And now we should be able to add D1 to the plans. There we go. Now we're going to start building a D1. Now I could do a build a D1 and then build a D2, which would get me my, my camera vessel also in the queue. That means we wouldn't have any time where the engineers are not building D2. Let's do that. I'm going to start integrating D1 and then I'm going to start integrating D2. So here's what it looks like with only the engineers in D1 that we started with, I think it's 10 engineers, it would take us until 1954, take us a thousand days to build D1, another thousand days to build D2. So let's bring up our staffing and our budget. I can do this from here. Normally I would do this from the main window. So the D launch complex is now busy. So over the next month, this is this is the actual cost over the next month. We have 25,000 funds to spend. If we want to start hiring people, that's going to cost us money to hire. And we are netting 4,000 per bucks a month above our costs because we've got a program budget coming in. I'm going to hire another 10 engineers. Remember, this is 4,000 and 25,000. Hiring the engineers is going to cost us 3,000. Go down to 22. We assign them to LCD. And that's you know, four or five hundred bucks per month. Let's do it again. We're so good. But 40 engineers, we're down to 28 curb bucks a month. This is positive cash flow, so we, we can afford to hire more. 50, we still have 13,000 curb bucks, and we have plenty of budget here. 60 engineers. 60 engineers, we still have 10,000 curb bucks and we're still doing well. Um, we may be able to fully staff this launch complex, 7,000 curb bucks. I am going to go ahead and fully staff this launch complex. There we go. So fully staffing launch complex D. We still have over 5,000 curb bucks in the bank, which isn't a whole lot, but we are still getting 1,300 more curb bucks coming in than we need to run. So in theory, I could staff the S-Launch Complex back up at this point. Um, 
and we could start a, a, uh, a rocket building over there. In actuality, what I want to do is start accumulating this balance back into our bank account. Now, as a result of doing all of that hiring, our D1 is going to come off the line September 17th, possibly sooner than that, because as our engineers work at doing integration, they get better at it, and they get better, they get faster. So there's where our downrange rockets are going to come in, September of 51 and February of 52. So let's head back to, come on, base career management goes away, that goes away, and we're going to leave this window. I'm going to plop down a save in case I hit the wrong warp button. This is timeline A, 1951-0510 at 21.35.19. And the title of this is D-1 and D-2 um, ordered. Let's call this D-1 building. Since that's what is happening at this time. And we didn't go broke building our first downrange rocket. Yay! Warp to complete. I'm going to warp until we can actually launch this guy. Now that means we're going to finish up some science. And with these two pieces of science in our pocket, we could go build a sounding rocket, but I want to do my upgraded sounding rockets when I get the better fuel tanks here in May of 52. And what that means is that we'll get D1 launched D2 will be coming up about the same time we start looking at sounding rockets. That's good. Warped complete. I'm going to do a hard save. 1951, September 29th at 07233 OUTC. This is D-1-1. So it's a D, so it's downrange rocket, configuration one, launch number one. And a launch. I'm going to take the sunrise option here. And if everything goes well, this is a completely automated flight that will fly up to meh, around 140 kilometers, a little higher than that and go at least 240 kilometers downrange, which is more than enough to satisfy this contract. It isn't completely automated. I did decide to have the engineer hit spacebar. I was doing a lot of simulation and rushing within five seconds to get the KOS window open so I could interrupt it, even if I wanted to do something completely different was kind of a, a pain. So we get all set, we get the windows up that we want to see. There's our contract that we're doing. And space. Power. We have our nice gradual turn to the east. And there's actually a bit of scripting in here that I didn't write. I was going to report my flight path angle, like, uh, print it out to the screen or something when we reach 140 kilometers. I never wrote that code in. Oh well. The code as it stands does satisfy the contract. In 
fact, it satisfies this one and the follow-up contract. Notice that this one only needs to get downrange 150 kilometers. Its follow-up needs to go further downrange, but we can do that one with this same rocket. Well, another rocket of this design. We are out of fuel. We uh, hold on to our engine, our fuel tank, until we are at the Carmen line. Say 80, uh, I guess 80 kilometers is where I stage it. That's right, when we get to 100 kilometers, I wanted to open the pedals on the uh, payload. So we stage. And these two parts will slowly drift apart because they have different drag, uh, different coefficients of drag. So the uh, big tank is going to move off to one direction. We're going to move off another direction. Eventually the tank will come past us and eventually it'll explode, yada, yada. So at the Carmen line, I'm opening up the pedals. Not important for this payload, but when we have a camera, that will expose the camera to the real world. And we are going to go all the way up to 142 kilometers. At this point, I'm going to hit some time warping because this does take a while to do. We're running at 4x speed. We are now in space. Notice this little notation here is blinking because we hit an uncrewed speed record and we hit the altitude record of 140 kilometers. And now we're back down below 140. We just barely peaked above 140 with this craft. Contract complete. So we got far enough downrange for this contract is done. Wait, I thought we had to do a recovery. Oh, that's right. For this particular one, we don't actually need to recover. So I could have done this mission without parachutes. So you could do this with a simpler rocket that doesn't have parachutes, doesn't bother with the clamshells. It just kind of carries everything. However, if you do soft land stuff, you can get some refunds. You, you can sell off the, the parts. You can get some funds back for recovering parts. Also, this serves as a test to make sure that our parachute actually works. Now, what we've got is we've got a drogue chute here, which is pulling on it, and we're kind of in, in balance here. Uh, the drogue chute is enough to pull this guy up, but not enough to make it go point down until it completely opens. So we slow down very nicely with a lot of aerodynamic forces on the capsule itself. And now we have the main chutes coming down at uh, 7 meters per second, so a little fast, and I am still at X4. Let's turn that off. And we have successfully splashed down. And I can recover the vessel. So, because we recovered, we got an extra six science for recovering a vessel after a suborbital flight. Woohoo! We got some funds back for the parts that were on the big chunk of, of stuff that we recovered. So, 515 funds, that's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. And I'm going to drop a hard save here, noting the success. So, A, 1951. September 29th at 12.36.35. This is S, no, no, E-1-1 successful. And I haven't decided where to spend the science yet. We've got a lot of science to go here. Um, actually, 
when we're messing around with these LCs, that gets us a lot of, of time. So uh, I'm going to start researching early rocketry and basic solid rocket engines. So we get some upgrades to our, our rockets. This is the second round of upgrades. And we're going to need eight science to do the early materials science. We don't have that yet. If I'd been launching my sounding rockets, I'd be picking up uh, science very slowly from, from temperature and barometric readings. So let us take a look at where we are in terms of budget and staff. LCD is currently chunking away building D2. We have 12,000 kerbucks, and our program budget is such that we actually have, we're accumulating 2,000 there, so I can hire 10 more engineers to staff up our, uh, our sounding rocket area. Let's do that. So now we can think about building new sounding rockets. We have upgrades to the engines, and we have upgrades to the um, the solid rocket boosters. We do not yet have upgrades to the tanks. That's not going to be here until May of 52. But I can start designing them. And who knows, maybe just upgrading the engines without upgrading the tanks is going to be enough to get us a sounding rocket that can do one of the sounding rocket contracts. So I'm going to cut this recording here. I'm going to go see if I can design additional sounding rockets using the new engines and the, the new boosters and see if we can maybe hit one of those contracts because it's always good to do that and if not um, maybe I will queue up an S1 where we can go get some science from the shores and from the ocean and finish up more science over the, the, uh, the forest. Sounds like a plan? Sounds like a plan. So until I get back with the next recording, go have some fun. I'll see you in the next one.